and welcome to the Mindset and Show TV show. We're so super excited for you to be joining us for yet another incredible guest that we're having on the show today. Somebody that I, you know, the, the industry and the work that he does, I think is so super important and I'm sure you'll agree. But first, let's welcome Peter Birch to the show. Hello, Peter. Hello, Michelle. How are you going? I'm great, thank you. And it is such an honour to have you on the show today. For people that aren't aware of Peter, Peter is the host of Talking Health Tech a podcast, community group, all sorts of very, very exciting and different areas that he works in all around this area and an area that more and more people will become aware of around medical technology, whether it's devices or ethics or policies, which again is a very, very important area for everybody. But there's so many different facets to medical health and technology that I really am fascinated, Peter. I'm sure everybody watching is really going to be interested in how did you come to be working in this area and what makes you so passionate about the work that you do? Uh, thank you. Look, great way to start off and happy to share my experiences. So I've always worked within healthcare and technology uh, in my career of 20 years or so in different different roles. I've never been a, I'm not a clinician and I'm not a software developer, but I get along swimmingly with everybody. Uh, I've worked with very large organizations. So running um, corporate emergency assistance programs, you know, bringing travelers back home from overseas or helping when you're, when you're traveling. I've run bricks and mortar clinics with practice managers reporting through to me where uh, you know, we're providing uh, travel medicine services. So getting vaccines and medical kits and and checks done before you go overseas. And, you know, it, that that was my experience then in using uh, different systems in inverted commas within the the clinic there. Our, our practice management system uh, consisted of manila folders and bits of paper and those compactus filing cabinets that you can get trapped in if you're not careful. So um, very familiar with the the operations of running a clinic on a day today and running multiple clinics there. I then moved across into more of the startup health tech life uh, with a company called Medi Records in 2016 that makes a cloud-based practice management system for for clinics. And that was a, a role where I was involved in in helping the founders build the business. And I've always, uh, so I've been in various roles where I've been the doer, the, the one that's, you know, the founders say, you know, this is the vision and this is what we need to do. Then someone's, someone's got to, got to drive the thing and do the, do the bits and pieces. So I've, you know, built up teams and businesses and become the jack of all trades type, type person w within a startup, particularly in the health tech space where, I'd be hiring people and then being the HR person, doing the sales, doing the marketing, doing the customer success, fixing the Wi-Fi, taking the bins out, all the things that you need to do in a in a startup. But then I um I started to get into more industry roles. So on the board of the Medical Software Industry Association, I'm also um, quite active with the Australasian Institute of Digital Health, and I'm on the New South Wales State Committee there, help growing the community there. Um, while I was doing all of this in healthcare, I was also hosting um, community radio shows. So I was involved in community radio in like the early 2000s. And, um, you know, I hosted one of Australia's leading underground Australian metal radio shows for about seven years, which was pretty wild. Um, I did a lot of stuff on FBI radio and doing those overnight shifts. So all these things were that were unrelated to my health career um but were a lot of fun and i enjoyed doing video production and other bits and pieces but these two kind of worlds kind of came together a couple of years ago in 2017 2018 i was looking for podcasts to listen to about digital health because i'm in that space and i'm like you know podcasts and these types of conversations they're a great medium to just you know dive in learn more about a particular topic so i'm like oh there's that's interesting there's a couple in there were a couple in the us and the uk and um but nothing in australia and i always found it a really siloed isolated industry to work in where you know health is such a big thing and a big problem to solve but it feels like sometimes you can just be doing it you know, by yourself and it's hard to find your tribe. So I thought, well, a podcast might be a great way to share some of these conversations I'm having individually with, whether it's other partners as a vendor or with potential customers and all of that, just sharing those stories. And so I started up this podcast, leveraging all the old experience I had in the radio side and the podcast was received really well. It had a decent network, brought on some good guests, but I honestly thought it might last for, you know, maybe 
20 episodes. I mean, how many episodes could you do on a podcast focusing on health technology, right? But, you know, fast forward to now, uh, nearly five years later, it's my full-time thing. Uh, we've done 340 something episodes at the time of recording this. Um, we, we do much more as part of talking health tech, but, uh, this whole content and community piece, uh, particularly around healthcare innovation has been uh, particularly important to me. Wow. And thank you so much. There's again, just like I started saying, there's so much in that medical and technology space. There's so much in that background and um, I can really hear and, and um, was imagining you with some of those really big, um, I haven't seen them for a few years, but I do remember those really big compactuses that people could get <laughs> crushed in. It's dangerous, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you were standing in the middle of one of them and somebody at the other end yeah. <laughs> needed a file or something. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Like, um, and one day those things will be in a museum, and people will be like, it'll be like the the dial telephone. People yeah. will be looking at it like, really? You had paper files and you stuck them in there, and they're alphabetical and so on and so forth. But many I've seen, and the last ones I've seen, are, sorry, have actually been used to store stationery and stuff. So, um, yeah, they, they haven't been used for filing and for files for a number of years, but. I like how you um, described all that and gave such a wonderful sense of the, the operational level background, not as a clinician, not as an allied health person, and not as a tech specialist, but within that industry that you had such an extensive background. And then um, obviously cut a lot of your teeth on the hiring, firing, designing organisations for startups. And, and that's a very fast moving feast. Of, building it as you go, which uh, many people watching would be aware of, mm. all the way through to then working with industries and boards and being on some of those scientific and, and technology boards that you're a part of today. So what a wonderful and, and wide um, background across the industry you have. And I'm sure that this is by um, the podcast that you thought would go for a couple of episodes is now still going strong five years later. And it has evolved to being one of your full-time roles. And I'm sure we'll keep, especially with AI today, keep evolving and growing as this very important focus um, within Australia as well, because we are quite different to health systems, some of the health systems overseas. Um, we'll keep growing and developing. With so much in all of that and um, so much in terms of your experience and background and expertise in this space. What about you, the person? What, what would you say that for you today, success means? What does it mean to you having essentially worked in different areas, gone, oh, I'll try this and it's been successful, I'll try that and it's been successful. What do you define success as for you today? Sure. Look, that's... Um... A really interesting one to unpack because I guess putting in the context of that background that I gave you, you know, I came into management roles organically, but quite early in my career. So I was back then, you know, a, a manager in my early twenties, but, you know, working with teams that, um, uh, there was a lot that I did in healthcare, but also in other services too. I was managing teams of nurses who had much more experience in the space than I, and, and were obviously very good nurses as well. I've managed teams of trade qualified mechanics in a call center before. And um, I, I can tell you, I am definitely nowhere near a trade qualified mechanic. So there's, there's uh, throughout my career, I've often, you know, dealt with that, that familiar challenge of imposter syndrome or feeling well above my my head in terms of you know in well above my head in terms of what needed to be done and but you know pulling on from my own experiences but i think that's probably where a lot of that you know doing things getting my hands dirty and getting to know things uh comes from is trying to build that confidence and and demonstrating that capability by by doing it firsthand another thing that kind of speaks to that too is my, my journey through doing qualifications for stuff and i and if you look at my background just based on qualifications, it kind of doesn't really make much sense. I've got initially experience and qualifications in, I guess, advertising and marketing, but then nothing for a while. And then I did an MBA. Uh, and then, but after the MBA, I, I, I did a CPA. And so I'm, I'm technically a certified practicing accountant. Uh, but then I'm also a certified 
uh, health informatician, uh, and and I have a few other random qualifications. And we and we run a a, a podcast and and media company that does a lot of video and audio editing. So there's this bizarre mix of stuff that I'm kind of a, a, a walking qualified business in a sense. But uh, that whole journey comes from doing the MBA really early in my career. I um, you know, went through and really understood the importance of being able to manage a PL, for example. And the, and the, uh, I, I struggled early in my career in just understanding the financials and the, what makes a business tick. And I knew full well that there's obviously important points around culture and people and things. But in the end, if you don't know the numbers, you're going to be, you, you, how do you communicate through the business right up to a, a senior exec level? And so I even did the MBA and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm good, but I really don't feel confident in the numbers. And now I'm managing multiple P&Ls as a general manager. How else can I get more confident in, um, you know, these financials? On, on reflection, I probably should have just watched a bunch of YouTube videos or maybe got a mentor or something. But instead, I decided to do, to become a certified practicing accountant because then no one can say I'm, I don't know this stuff if, I'm a, if I've got a CPA. And I don't recommend that journey for many people because that was probably a big, like, like the CPA is wonderful and you should do that if that's your, your kind of pathway to, to being a, an accountant and, and do those qualifications for those reasons. And there's an element of doing qualifications for, you know, giving yourself that confidence. And the same with the MBA. People still ask me, should I do an MBA? And it's kind of like, it depends. Part of it is just getting the bit of paper and um, having that thing to tick a box. And so I, I think of that a lot with qualifications. I, I probably place more weight on experience as a better qualification for doing something. So when I think about your question around what success is, you know, it's it's showing results and, and setting your mind to something and doing the thing. I'm a big advocate for, um, you know, yes, you need a vision and yes, you need to talk about what things might need to look like. But in the end, I'm just about getting stuff done. So uh, I, I think that that's, you know, a, a really important thing that's driven me throughout my, my pathway. And that probably comes from that early stage of needing that confidence and, you know, being able to demonstrate what I thought was to other people that I, I knew what I was doing. But in the end, I think it was about actually justifying to myself. So I would hope to think that, and it's not that I, you know, and I'm still working on this on a day to day now. So, but what I do strive for at least in terms of success is being able to um, reflect on some of those successes that I've had in the past and that are demonstrable and we can look at in terms of the business and all the other bits and pieces, reflecting on that and going, well, you know what, because I still get imposter syndrome on a daily basis right now. And that's just life, I think. So being able to acknowledge that and then go, okay, um, you know, in spite of that, let's get on and work out what needs to be done. That's what I think drives a lot of success in, in setting that goal and just doing the thing. Wow, and again, you know, I'm I'm so impressed with the um, the depth and the breadth of your um, responses and, and your answers to these questions because um, success I can see and I can hear is again something that is quite a profound and, and quite wide um, definition for you in terms of you know reflecting on your journey and, and that sense of imposter syndrome and the the uh, managing teams of nurses and mechanics from a, a younger age and, and that, that sense of, well, I'm doing it, but they're the experts at their specialities, but I'm becoming the expert at leading teams and leading people to get things done. So throughout what you were describing, I, I wasn't surprised when you kind of encapsulated it into, you know, it's about getting things done and showing those practical results. That That's what success means to you because in a sense, whether it's been completing an MBA or a CPA or, or whatever you've set your mind to, and these are all really, um, in again, in-depth and very practical, but very deep um, specialities to then go and learn and work in. You know, it takes a long time and a lot of exams to get your CPA. So the, these I should have looked that up at the start, shouldn't I? But that was, <laughs> but to your point, to your, that's very true. I, I do resonate with that point around, um, you know, if there's something that I want to do, I'm going to work out how to do it. So, but then that it's just having that, it's not just having, it, it's, uh, uh, it's about having that consistent, r resilient kind of focus on all of this noise, all these things are happening, but in like, this is what, what's that 
thing that you're striving for. Uh, and, and I can see how that can, can be a pro and a con because that's, that can be, um, you know, for every one thing you say yes to, you're saying no to something else and all those types of things that I still struggle with on a day to day as well. But, um, yeah, setting my mind to something and just no matter what getting that thing done is, has kind of been how I've operated on day to day. Yeah, and it's um, people like yourself that um, I've come across, um, the, the, what I would call a high achiever, you know, somebody that says, I'm going to go do this and does it and, and builds up in a career and a, a life path of um, success. And, and that's why um, it's so wonderful to have people like yourself on the show, because you've built these habits, you've built these practices and habits, whether it's, you know, deciding to do something and then going and doing it and seeing it through to the end, whatever the end may be and however long it may take. But it's also that um, it's that par partly it's that funny thing where as a younger person um, sometimes placed into more senior and serious roles, that sense of imposter syndrome, which like you quite rightly pointed out, never really leaves you. But what it does is in a strange way, it then motivates and keeps motivating people to keep studying and learning mm. and growing throughout their career. And because of that, as you then go through your career and become on boards and then you want to be chair of the board and you want to this and you want to that. So you go and study everything to do with boards and you go and study everything to do with that industry, et cetera. So it's um, what, what we're showing and what we're talking about is some of those habits that can be built in whatever person's life path it is when they're younger and then can be expanded on as you become more aware of what they are as you get older. Yeah. And if I could share too, like on that, you know, your reflection just made me think about another thing that I, that I think of often, which is, I think quite early in my career, I, I looked at progression was, you know, promotions, climbing that corporate ladder, getting those qualifications, adding the post nominals to the end of your name. And, you know, and then you're going to make it. And if you get to that point, then you've, you've done it. But then when you, when you get the qualification or you get the promotion or you get the, it, you know, you can, you can celebrate the thing, but you're kind of like, well, all right, now, now that's good. What next? And so I, I'm kind of at that point now already, like I'm, you know, and I've still got plenty of years left. I'm speaking like I'm an old wise relic, aren't I? But I'm far from that. But <laughs> I feel like these days it's not about, we're talking health tech, for example, it's not about building a, a, a company that's going to 10X in five years and it's going to have this remarkable reach of billions of people listening to the podcast and all that kind of stuff. I'm a big advocate for at the moment having resonance instead of reach. So finding that key message and honing in on it and having clarity and and speaking to those key people. This is what I love about platforms these days, like podcasts and communities that you can niche down, speak to people and resonate with, you know, your tribe, how big or small it is. It doesn't matter that you don't have the millions and millions of followers that, um, don't, don't value that, that kind of quick snackable content. If you've got quality stuff that you can share, I think that's, that's what's driving me at the moment is, um, creating something that has meaning and impact rather than just scale. Yeah, and, and I, I love, I think that's a wonderful segue because that, that's part of, I think we've already moved on to that, the part of the show where we start to talk about the tips and the suggestions. And I love how you're reflecting there um, a number of things. One is the external or the extrinsic, you know, kind of motivation, which is very normal. We, we kind of condition throughout school that we want to get 10 out of 10. And, and so when you finish school, whether it's at high school or university age, you're still looking for that 10 out of 10, which translates into, I want to be head of this company, head of this department, head of whatever. And then slowly you realise, well, it's not so much the extrinsic, it's the intrinsic or inside you. What is it that gives you meaning and what gives you satisfaction and direction in life? And, and the more that you look for that, you, you so beautifully translated that into the business sense, which is about the resonance and reach of your niche. Can you, what, what, what area of your tribe, where are your people and what kind of work or business can you have in that niche that will actually mean that you're around other people talking about the things that you're interested in, working on the things that you're interested in and creating more of that match between what's external to you in terms of your meaning and your niche 
and what's internal to you, which is what gives you joy in terms of your habits. Peter, with so much success in so many different areas, I, I'm really interested as well in when people are watching the show and they might look at you and go, well, you know, it's easy for him because he has, you know, so much motivation, so much get up and go and had early success that kind of reinforced that motivation and get up and go. What would what sort of suggestions would you give to people that might be struggling a little bit more to kind of find that, you know, niche or find that get up and go? What what do you think was one of the key things that helped you to keep going when obviously everybody has their ups and downs, but what helped you to keep going? Sure. Look, I um uh I the, the if 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 you know 20 something years ago I said to you well this is what I'm going to do I'm going to work through as in, in big corporate land for a while and then move to the startup world and then become a an authoritative voice in digital health and health tech with a podcast network and a community I had no idea that was going to be the pathway. I, even three years ago, I did like when, the, so talking health tech became my full-time thing two years ago. When I started the podcast, I remember seeing a note that I wrote for myself and like I started a Slack group basically right from the very start in terms of, and I created a um, good vibes channel as in like, you know, like thinking about your wins, which actually comes to one of my recommendations to people. But I had a a channel within the Slack group, which is, you know, just put any wins in there. And then when things get a bit, difficult as they do in any life, whether you're in startup life or in a well-established business, there's going to be good days and not good days. Um, you know, I remember seeing a note that, and I only looked at it a couple of weeks ago when I started the podcast, my goal was to, um, I, I think do, do the podcast to be more of an authoritative voice, to be, um, hopefully more employable within my space and hopefully command a salary that I deserve or something like that. That was the, the kind of wording that I'd made then. And that was the the bar. And then it was just the podcast, just the audio podcast. I definitely didn't want to do video and I and I hated speaking in like to uh to video. I did plenty of radio stuff and I was so used to looking down and reading notes and not looking at a camera and all that kind of stuff. Um I didn't know much about digital marketing. Like I I'd done like when I did my marketing stuff, all of the SEO and and all of that stuff didn't really exist then. So and I wasn't really, didn't think I was going to, but it just progressively became like, okay, I want to, we're, we're doing these audio recordings. Well, maybe we should be putting them somewhere. I'm going to learn a bit more about websites. And then while I'm doing websites, what's this SEO thing? And I'm like little bits here. So, and then it continued to build and build and build and which is now like podcasts and video and then the podcast network. So in terms of what, what this thing's going to look like in five years time, who knows? It's I kind of feel like it's a little bit like driving, you know, on a, on a really dark road with headlights on, like you, you know, what you're doing about this far ahead and you're on a road, you're going to go somewhere, hopefully you don't drive off a cliff, but you, at least you've got the lights on to see a little bit further ahead. And so that's kind of how it feels a little bit what I'm, what I'm doing at the moment, but maybe I can see like there's some kind of distant lights there that I'm roughly going towards. So my advice to people who might find it a struggle to either get started or, or have progress. Um, it's, it's sometimes the same advice I give to my kids at the moment when they go to clean their room and they're like, I can't do it because it's just too much stuff. And it's like, well, like just pick something up and put that one thing away and then come back to it and then maybe put it in groups and do those and just focus on these things. So I think, and I still, and I try and do that too, because I get overwhelmed a lot. Uh, and I think, well, you get to the point of overwhelm and then you end up doing nothing, even though you've got so much stuff to do. So I think just starting with one thing and focusing on that and trying to do that yeah, and I love your brains again, so many fabulous examples to kind of um, reinforce and reflect on the, the skills and the habits aren't, aren't just applicable in like a boardroom or a big corporate, but also with startups and also as a parent. And, you know, you, those, those same elements work whether you're talking to, you know, a colleague that's having trouble getting started or motivated because they're overwhelmed mm -hmm. and saying exactly the same thing you know, start off with um, one thing, pick one thing and then start to group those one things and then keep going and keep going. And I think that that's, you know, a, a really um, important piece of advice. And, and Peter, quickly, 
If people were wanting to get hold of you after the show, what's the best way of connecting with you? Sure thing. Probably easiest on LinkedIn. I'm pretty, um, pretty good on the DMs. They get a bit busy, but um, I, I try and get back to everyone. So please um, feel free to to follow or connect and and send me a note. Let us know that you um, heard the conversation. Always happy to connect for a chat. Um, I'm based in Sydney and always good for a coffee with uh, schedules allow as well. Wonderful. How generous. And my final question, and you kind of alluded to different elements earlier and, and um, everything from, you know, not realising how long a CPA might take and those sorts of things. But if you were to give your younger self some advice, what might that advice be? I think that uh, that advice around reiterating some of those points that we've discussed before, uh, that you, you, you don't need permission to do something. I think the advice that other people also have often have no idea what's going on either. So it's okay. And a lot of people are kind of just making it up as they go. And like, so you look to people who strive with confidence, uh, like there's, they've probably because they've done something that can give them that confidence, but a lot of that might only be 20% of the way. The rest of it is, is, um, you know, the, the, how they carry themselves and, and what they do. So trust, trust in yourself that I don't know about fake it till you make it. That sounds a bit of a, a weird one, but it's the, um, have a go. I think that's the, you know, in, in the end, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for the pathway that I've done. So I'm not saying I would have liked to have done anything any earlier or any differently, but if that's helpful, particularly for people coming up early in their career, because what I suggest to someone in their early twenties, you know, that they should go to work with a cap and earrings on and start a podcast. And there's maybe not like that's that work. Cause that, that's something I did after, you know, demonstrating that I've, you know, done these things within businesses and, and got those runs on the board, so to speak. So I'm a big advocate, advocate for demonstrated by doing, um, like show, show people what you can do by, by, by showing them, not just talking about it. And then try and share that with as many people as possible to, to compound and do things at scale and hopefully have a meaningful impact on the world. Wonderful. What a, an amazing, fabulous message. Try and do what you um, want to do and, and keep that, you know, impact on the world. But again, summed up, I think, so beautifully in what you were saying about trusting in yourself and that, you know, what if somebody, especially if you're younger, they may look more confident and be more confident in certain ways, but they don't necessarily have all of those answers and to trust your own intuition and, and to just give it a go, give things a go. It's such a wonderful, wonderful messages from today. And Peter, it's been such an honour and a privilege to have you on the show. Thanks, Michelle. I really appreciate it. And to all the viewers, it's been another incredible show where we've had some really wonderful insights from the fabulous Peter. And we loved so much hearing all of the different messages and, and notes from you about how much you appreciate all of the different insights each show. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great, be fabulous and be you.